or bro. I don't know what they were talking about. What? <laughs> I got to tell you a funny story with, with that group. And I don't know if um if they remember, I doubt they remember them guys tour all the time. So I, I know they're a mutual uh, group. But okay. uh, yeah, that's my favorite group out. But yeah, I got to tell you. Yeah, it's at the end of the interview, they go hard, though. Yeah, because I want to ask you on, on the music part, too. I really want to get in that. So okay, I uh, will do that at the end here. Um. Yeah, but uh, it, it was a funny story with them, and, and actually Buck Cherry. But uh, so yeah, with that being said, so we got the, the landscape right now of one forty seven. Okay, and, and I guess all the weight classes around. I mean, even right below, I'm sure you probably keep an eye open on one forty. Um, yeah, you know, uh, one forty seven. You're you're a big kid, uh, and you're you're growing, and, and uh, we all know this. Unfortunately, nobody wants to hear it. But the older you get, the harder it is to make weight. So 154 could be a possibility in the um, near future. Um, what is it like right now to be in a weight class that's just filled with that talent? Is there any one certain? You know, I know we got to look at one fight at a time and, and take a fight that's in front of you. But it would be unrealistic to mention that you don't sit there and think about the landscape of that, that weight class and, and who's out there. Right now, what do you think about that, the field of talent, and which route do you would you like to uh, travel to get into that that mix? Which you're already in the mix, but I'm saying when a title shot comes. Yeah. Uh, so well, what I think about it is, uh, I think that I'm in the best weight class in in all of boxing, you know, and I'm I'm very excited about that. I want I don't want to get a world title in some some pansy ass world uh, division where if I win a title or win undisputed, I'm not going to feel like I did anything, you know. Uh, when when I fought in the 2013 uh, Junior Olympics and Nationals, I, uh, all the good guys in the bracket were put in a weight where I had to fight every single one of them, and that's that's why that when I won that tournament, it's it's the most meaningful medallion. It's just a little medallion, but it's the most meaningful trophy that I got. Even out of all the belts, all the trophies I got, that little medallion means the most to me. So from saying that, um, I, I'm glad I'm in this weight class. It it, it uh. It's a real challenge, and I, I'm happy to take it. As far as the the way that I want to go, you know, I mean, really, uh, I would I do have a way I want to go, but the way like the other side of the street and stuff, how that goes on, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it. So I I do want to fight Earl Spence. Everyone knows I want to fight Earl Spence. I think that fight's gonna happen at 154 though. It's gonna be maybe like in two three years, most likely. Yeah. Um, I think that. If if I had if I had it my way, I would like to fight you know Danny Garcia, Porter, and Thurman. That would definitely open up opportunities right there. If I beat them, well, what's the road been like for those fights you know, right now? I mean, um, you are, you're the top good dog as far as contender. Uh, you, I mean, you're you're there. There's no other name. I mean, by now people should know. So I, I would yeah. imagine, especially if this hooker fight is, is made, mm. and you do what I what I believe you would do. I mean, you're, you you got to be. You know, it's got to be negotiations now, probably with Garcia or, or one of them guys up at the, that level. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I'm, that's that's what I'm hoping. You know, hypothetically, if I be a hooker, not looking past him, mm -hmm. uh, they, they should open up opportunities to fight people, even on the other side of the street, if they truly want to fight, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I've already heard uh, Porter doesn't want to fight me or John Ennis because he didn't get those fights back then, which I think is kind of dumb. Uh, Keith Thurman, I would I would love to fight Keith Thurman. I think he's a good fighter. He was actually my favorite fighter at 147 when I was at 140. He was my favorite one to watch. He was very explosive and he was very entertaining. And Danny Garcia, he's he's one fighter that I would I would love to fight as well. Mm -hmm. The only person to beat him convincingly was Earl Spence uh, this past December. So I think was it December? Yeah, it was December. All right, yeah. I'll just make sure. But yeah, um. It just uh, <laughs> put me on a spot like that. It might have been November. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know, man. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah. So, hey, what's up, James? Domingo is on here. What's up? There he is. Yeah, and so yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. What I think about 147 and the road. I can say I, I'm I'm gonna take whatever's given to me. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. I uh, I would have had James on with us if we could figure out this uh, Instagram yeah. thing. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I was going to say because you know, eventually, I'm sure it's probably going to get frustrating too. Um, you know, uh, with, with all the talent, you're going to want to be in that picture, and you're going to be hearing the names thrown out there and, and all that. Um, I'm hoping that you know, it's, it's so loaded. I don't think you can go wrong with no matter who you choose after you know when that time comes. Uh, with the hooker, 
if you don't mind, I mean, how close do you think that is to being the next fight? I really don't know. Um, you know, I'm just they. Uh, I just go day by day training, and uh, they give me some updates. Yeah. But I really won't update anyone until I know it's official. I don't want to get anyone's hopes up and all that stuff. So. Yeah. But I'm I'm fairly certain that it'll be made. Okay. There's yeah. no problems on my end at all. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, you know, again, too, you got guys. You know, w would you be interested? Just say if somebody like Tank Davis started, you know, coming up that way, or or uh, even Ryan Garcia. You know, those are you know possible fights. How do you think those would uh, fare out? I mean, I know you're you're a big welterweight, but would that be something that's interesting? I mean, that's yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. You know, those are definitely some some guys that I think they could carry their power over to 147. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the the fights will definitely be entertaining. Those are definitely pay per view fights right there. I think that uh, that I don't want to say who would win, you know, because I want to say that I want to win. You know, everyone thinks that they're gonna win. Uh, I just want to say it's it's gonna be good. They would be good fights if they were ever to happen. And I mean, yeah, I know everyone wants to see the best fights. So I, if, I if they, they ever did that, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Yeah, I think those would be great fights for you. Um. Here's what my point of it is. Um, unfortunately, in this day and age, we see on social media and everything with all these great fighters. You know, I don't go out purposely to knock the older generation, but I will call it how it is, kind of defending the, the new generation because a lot of the guys, they're all fighting. You know, they, they do fight each other. And, and you see yeah, no, they guys are. in your way, like to say Danny Garcia and Sean Porter hasn't fought some tough guys, you know, throughout their career is, is crazy. And, and Pacquiao, who's still active. But yeah. I think – Something like that. Like once you really start getting rolling in those those fights, you know, on the business side of it, what you got to think about because you know you want your keep your health and everything else along with winning. Those would be great fights. Ryan Garcia or Tank Davis, you know, those are big names and especially coming up, you know, th that that draws a lot of attention too. So you know that right there is is a big thing for you to take that fight on the business part of it as well. Like yeah, yeah, you wouldn't be ducking nobody. You're fighting the top guys. You know, it wasn't a problem when. Roberto Duran went all the way from lightweight to, you know, light heavyweight. So in the middleweights, when they beat Roberto Duran, Nagler, was, you know, was the greatest when he did that, you know. Um, yeah. So I don't see what the big deal for two weight classes. Um, yeah. Would, would you be – I mean, obviously, those are interesting fights. What do you think? Oh, no, definitely they are. And like I said, if the opportunity were ever to come up, I'm not going to say no. Yeah. You know? I, I, I want to fight the best. And they those two names right there that you said are the best at that weight. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say no. Yep. Is there anyone else right now just in the entire boxing world that you follow or any other weight class? Um, kind of like the, this is more of a state of the game. Like, where do you see boxing at right now in, in 2021? I think it's it's going to be a good year. You know, um, you know, as far as pandemic wise, I think we had a good year in 2020 boxing wise because we had some good fights. Especially for a pandemic, even even pandemic aside, we had some great fights made. I think the promoters had no choice but to make those fights, you know. Yeah. So uh, we had some good fights. You know, uh, I'm not. I can't name right now off the top of my head what fights are happening in 2020. Uh, but there, there's there's gonna be some good fights made. You know, we got some potential fights uh, at lightweight. You know, with Delfimo, Devin Haney. We got Tank if he wants to move up. I'm sure he'll move up again at 135. You got Ryan. Uh, there, there's a lot of names to choose from. You know, yeah, and 147. Your your class right now, by far, I think is is the hottest. But lightweight yeah. ain't too far behind. Super middleweight ain't too far behind. You know what I, I mean? Know. Those weight classes yeah. and junior middleweight. Uh, real quick, we I, I got one that I caught. Guy says, "Is one forty out of the question for you ever to to make again?" It's it's out of the question. Of the question. I, so I make I make weight to the point where I can't make it anymore. You know, uh, I forgot. I fought. In January in 2018, I fought at 143 because I could not make that weight anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't do it anymore. So, you know, I get a lot of tweets. A lot of people asking me, like, go down to 140 uh, to fight this guy. I'm like, dude, I can't. Even if I wanted to, you know, I can't. I would love to. I feel like I can I can win a, a world title at 140 pretty easy, but I'm not able to make that weight class anymore. Yeah. So one, I'm going to stay at one. And if you did perform the way that you wanted to from the weight drain, then, oh yeah. Well, you're making excuses and all that, so it really ain't for all the yeah, you, that comes with it. It's not worth it either. So yeah, you really can't win on that part right there. Yeah, you know, people say all the time, like, who cares what people say? But unfortunately, we see right now, 
sometimes the media and the fan base kind of kind of pushes the fighter to a certain you know weight class or into a certain fight when yeah when it's not their their calling on it. But um, yeah, that's uh that's cool, man. I mean it it really is a, a, a talented time in boxing, in my, in my opinion. So, and you're fortunate to be right in the the hottest one too. So it's crazy. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. So let's. I want to hear about. We know about the box now. You've been showing us all about that, knocking everyone out. What we? I, I heard a little rumor that your first love was music. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, guitar. So I the guitar. Uh, the way I got into that was I started playing Guitar Hero. I'm sure that's how a lot of people got into rock back then. That's. That wasn't how I got into rock. My dad had a lot of rock in his Zoom, his, his MP3 player that he had back then. But I, I was listening to it even back then, but Guitar Hero made it even more. You know, I was starting getting the timing down. I'm like, okay, well, if I get a guitar, how hard is that? So mm. I started picking it up little by little. It was hurting. It hurt the fuck out of my fingers at first, man. <laughs> but, you know, I'm used to it now. You had no and, problem stretching the fingers on certain notes or anything? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, there's, like, a lot of bar chords that, you know, that – Pretty much the main bar chord. It's 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 pretty hard, but you know it's it's all in the wrist. You know, like you got. I'll show you. Hold on. All right, there we go. I'll show you. Hey, you should charge so, for this too. <laughs> for real. So look, so we got a we got a G chord right here. Look, notice how my wrist itself changes. I didn't know I was supposed to do this. We got a bar chord. See how it moves all yeah. the way forward. I didn't know I was supposed to do that. No one taught me how to do it. I'm self taught. Mm -hmm. So. That's that's like one thing uh, I had to figure out by myself. But yeah, man, uh, figuring that thing out by myself, man, it, it was a journey, and I'm pretty, I'm proud of myself for that because mm -hmm. I I had no one help me at all. So and, that's, people... and piano, I taught myself piano as well. But yeah, piano, you don't play drums at all? Uh, I want to learn. That's what I want to learn next. Yeah, that's what I want to learn next. So my question, um, I'm gonna stay in the music for a few minutes, so just bear with me. All right, cool. So yeah, like. You know, for being a boxer and supposedly supposed to be coordinated, you know, I can't with the drums. You know, well, the guitar, I can't hands. I just can't from, you know, surgeries and, and scar tissue. And yeah. Else. It's, uh, I'm sure if I had somebody that knew what they're doing, they could show me little shortcuts. The drums, man, I can't get the feet and the hands. You know, the hands want to do it. That's hard. Them, you know. That's hard. I, dude. Yeah, and I don't have the patience. Like, I went on YouTube, and they're talking about, like, um, the little tricks to kind of get the, to train the brain to move with the, the the hand i'm just like i'm done with this man um yeah. i love music to death but the patience for me is just hard um the drums you uh, so i guess the question would be what guitar have you learned to where you're able to sing while you're playing no i i can't even sing as it is bro I, i'll kill some birds outside if i start singing <laughs> I, I hear you on that. No, it's it's hard like I would try. I, I've definitely tried before, but it's just hard. It's it's the it's the timing. The timing gets up, and once I start talking, when I start playing guitar, I mess up. I yeah, just can't. Like our like our boys in the bench. You know, you have watched your videos or their concerts when they're doing it, and they're shredding. You know, they're just oh yeah, that's they're, they're they're going crazy on end. They're still singing like it's nothing. Yeah. And you know, the drummers. I feel like the drummers is probably the worst part because they're the ones that have to set the tempo, and then they're over here singing at a different tempo. That's that's hard as shit. Yeah, I mean, go back to when with Rev, you know, you guys. That's what I'm and, saying. And beating the 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 crap and not never missing a beat. Um, yeah, man, that's amazing. Uh, you know, that's what's cool because I'm a huge music lover, and uh, it's just hard though for me to really. I guess patience is not is not my thing, so I kind of just sit back and pretend I know a lot about music, and and <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I follow my favorite groups. That's cool, but so yeah, I'll get into that uh, little story real quick. I think you get a kick out with with the Venge. Um, okay. Back, this is probably 09. And I don't know if any of them guys, even, like I said, remember when they tore so much. Um, they came in and the guy here where I fought at, there's a called the Cabelli Center um, okay. in Youngstown, Ohio. And uh, they were playing, they were on tour and they were touring with uh, Buck Sherry. Well, the road manager, I believe, I might be off here, but the road manager was the same guy with Buck Sherry and, and Avenge. And they called in like, the afternoon before. Well, her Buck Cherry were like big boxing people and, and they like working okay. out the training. So my guy, this guy, Eric Bryan, called me, who was my partner, and he was like, hey, uh, you want to come in? Buck Cherry wants to work out with you. You know, they probably looked up, found world champion Kelly Pavlik, young son. Yeah. 
So many came in like seven o'clock, seven thirty in the morning, maybe eight at the latest. Damn. And I'm in there, and, I, and how cool is that, dude? It'd be that's that's you're, badass. Yeah, you're training Buck Cherry, you're putting them through a workout, and I kind of felt bad, like they were awesome dudes, Josh, Todd, they were all fun, but I'm going, dude, they're playing with Avenge tonight, you know, and and wow. I knew I was going to the concert, so I was like super stoked, you know what I mean? So we get to the concert, and um, I'm in the locker room or the dressing room with uh, Buck Cherry. But the entire nice. time, like, I, you know, I already got to hang out with Buck. I got to train him, and, and I was in the room. I'm kind of like, man, I got to get over and see the guys. So I got to see my favorite band. And, and they actually, I finally got a chance to get over with them. You know, I got a picture and everything. And, and uh, nice. guys, it was pretty cool. Um, got to go up on stage. I think uh, Buck Cherry called me out and introduced me on stage. But it was in Youngstown. Same place where I fought uh, Rubio at, so it was a okay one of my. I, I could put that up there with talking to the Ohio State team um, the night before the Michigan game, and then obviously wow. the world title. So that's awesome, dude. That that that's one people. That's one set of people. I have a list of people that I want to meet before I die. A Ben Simmons vote is is at the top of that list. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. cool, man. Um, yeah, so but going back, last thing. So is that kind of like your your downtime too? So. You know, a lot of fighters yeah. win train. I don't know if I hit you, hit you on that one yet. Um, you know, my thing kind of was like either going to movies or finding something to kind of break me down from from the fight, you know, from people people don't understand. First of all, worrying about making weight, um, press conferences, this uh, media thing and showing up here. Sometimes you need to get a little bit away from um, boxing. Yeah, people are, they're asking me my weight and calling me Dana White, man. That's horrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is uh, you know, that your your little thing though is with the music? Do you find that that kind of like takes you away a little bit? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely the music. Um, you know, the guitar, the piano. I like to play my my PS Five. It's 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 badass. I I play the I can play the PS Five all day, dude. Yeah. Just just Call of Duty, just straight Call of Duty. I like to run, believe it or not. Believe um, running probably takes my mind away from things. <laughs> it, <laughs> the music, the music distracts me. It really does, okay. and it makes me feel good inside. You know, especially when I'm done. Sometimes when I'm done, I'm like, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna go walk just because I'm not ready to go inside yet. Yeah. You no. Know? And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Really, just music. Uh, PS Five and running. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't do too good watching. I like, I love watching movies and TV shows, but I can't do it a lot. I, I, I will eventually. You didn't pick nothing up during the quarantine. Like uh, I never I've, watched any of those uh, movies or series or anything like that. And that quarantine hit, man, where everything was shut down. Next thing I know, I, I watched did. every show that I missed in the last fifteen years. So. I did. I picked up a lot on it too. Hey, bro, have you watched Cobra Kai? Oh yeah, man. Bro, that hell, shit's badass. Hell yeah, I got the picture. I put it up on my uh, Instagram where I'm in the Cobra Kai gi. So, dude, I, I, if I ever do Halloween again, it's gonna be a Cobra Kai. It's, yeah. I, it's that's gonna that's gonna be my car co- that's my next costume yeah right awesome. there and my, my son was excited you know i had to go back for me i had to play the movies when i was a kid like one two oh, yeah. or three and put those on for my son and then like he got into it from there and kind of got the storyline and then i think what was it new year's day or something that that new season yeah. came up and yeah. man, we were all all about it like popcorn time ready to go and, and hell yeah it stopped everything yeah that was like, I, I was staying up till three in the morning right yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, telling you, I was so I was so excited for that season, man. Yeah, well, that's cool. Oh, hey, Virgil, I'm gonna let you go. I know you're busy, man. Um, I, I truly uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, this is my first time doing this, and you know I want to keep doing it. Um, I appreciate you giving me the time. Uh, I you know, tell your pops I said hey, and best of oh, luck. Keep us posted on you know what's going on, what the next move is, and mm-hmm. uh, you know I got your back, man. So I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you. Always always good talking to you. Absolutely, bro. All right, man. Have a good one, man. Take care.